Hello all you Umbraco scamps out there. My name is John and in this video you're going to learn how to create a back office extension with an Umbraco V9. Specifically in this video you're going to learn how to create a view, you're going to learn how to create secured controllers so no one in the world can access it, you're also going to learn all about how to display that view inside of the Umbraco back office. Now the good news is we're going to be doing this using the mighty C Sharp. Now it is possible to create back office extensions using AngularJS. Now hands up, I don't know AngularJS and I cannot be bothered to learn it just to create a simple extension. Now for me personally, when I'm designing and architecting a CMS project, I like to try and keep things simple and everything contained in the same area. So I think regardless if you do know AngularJS, my recommendation would be to build all these types of screens using C Sharp because it's just gonna make your code base easier going to be easier for you to hire in your team shape later on and it's basically just going to make everyone's life on your project much happier and who doesn't want that now if you haven't come across one of my videos before we are in a season on Umbraco v9 development so this is episode 10 and this video is the culmination of a few previous videos so we're going to get a load of topics that I've been talking about and like put them all together in this video so previously I've talked about things like examining the Lucene index so we're going to be writing to the internal index. We've talked about eye content so we can write data back to the CMS. We've talked about notifications, so how we can hook into the event pipeline to do some custom stuff. And today we're going to use all of that stuff to render a custom list of unpublished pages in a Umbraco back office extension. So if any of the topics I cover today get a bit too complicated for you, what I recommend is use the link below in the related tutorial, um, go through the previous videos and you you're a clever person, you've got this, you can figure it out yourself, maybe. So if you haven't already, and I recommend you do this before doing anything else, smash the subscribe button. If you like Umbraco V9, if you wanna learn more about Umbraco, or if you just wanna to learn to be a better developer and be the best developer you can be, this is the channel for you. Become a legend, smash subscribe, boom. So assume you've done all of that, let's crack on and create this back office extension. I'm going to start things off as usual by giving you the handy tip that all the code that you're seeing in this video is being added into my Umbraco V9 starter kit. So I know from first hand experience when you're trying to do a tutorial online, trying to copy stuff off screen can be a massive pain. So if you want to save yourself a load of heartache, if you want to play along at home, go over to my GitHub, which is at johndjones.com. From here, you can see on the start page, I've pinned my Umbraco V9 starter kit. So what you want to do is first follow me and be a legend. You also want to say that you like and star my repo because you also want to be a legend. And then you know how the GitHub works. Just come in here, clone away, let's all be happy. So let's have a look at how we can get this dashboard to work. Now, the first thing I think we should start at is looking at how we register a dashboard with an Umbraco CMSs. So for reference, what we'll be doing today is creating this plugin right here. So the thing which is called unpublished tutorials is completely custom. We're going to click on it and it's going to display this list of published, unpublished pages and scheduled pages. So this file here is basically responsible for rendering and making that view work. So the first thing you can do is define which section you want your custom dashboard extension to appear under. So if we go back to the CMS, you can see that we have all these tabs at the top. So content, media, settings, packages, whatever. Now you can get access to all these names because it's easier to do it this way by doing constants, applications. And then from here, you can see that I'm accessing content. I can put in forms, media. So you'll get access to all the names in here. Also, this is a enumerable list rather than a single value. So if you really want to, you can have your extension rendering in multiple places. Now, the next thing you want to do is set the access rules. So for all my plugins, if I'm honest, whenever I've done this, I just set it to editor group alias. You can get access to it for um, all the different options through constants, security, and then editor group alias. So you just want to allow grants. And then as you see from here, you've got lids and lids of stuff. So we've got access to things like, yeah, admins, editor groups, uh, default members, blah, blah, blah. There's loads of stuff in there. So if you've got a particular need, have a look in there, you're probably gonna find something useful. 
Now, just like every single page or property we create within Umbraco, everything needs an alias. So you're going to need to define this alias here. This is an internal reference, so it won't be shown everywhere. Now, next up, you need to define the location that will get called whenever your screen is rendered within CMS. So one really important thing to note is that whenever you're creating a back office extension, if you want to make sure that the security checks and all that sort of stuff works, you've got to prefix your root with Umbraco back office plugins. So we've got Umbraco back office plugins. Then from there, we've got admin and then unpublished tutorials. So this last part basically maps to a controller of R that I've created. So in my code base, you can see that I've got this file called unpublished tutorials. It hasn't been named the best, but it's actually called admin controller. And in here we've got this index method. So our call is basically going to learn, load this view up, which is then going to do some extra stuff. Now, the first thing I'd like to note in here is that this controller is actually of type aspnet.nvc.controller. Now, this might be a bit different to um, anyone who's watched my ultimate controller guide might be expecting. Now, if you're not aware, Umbraco ships with this Umbraco authorized controller thing, and it's recommended that you use this to create back office extensions. Now, in my video, I basically created this controller and this works a tree. It returns this content which says hello from authorized controller. Now, the problem is, is that when we're doing back office extensions, we want to render views, not bits of content. And if you actually try and add view here or anything like view, you're going to get this. It does not exist. This was not ideal. There's probably a way around it. However, to solve this issue, I thought, I wonder what the Umbraco authorized controller actually looks like. So going to the Umbraco GitHub, which is in umbraco.web.common.controllers authorized controller, you can see that it's an abstract class. It inherits from just the controller base and it's just using the authorize and the disable browser cache attributes. So yeah, just simply copying these two things is going to do exactly the same as using the Umbraco authorized controller. So if you have problems getting that to work, just do what I did. It makes your life easier. It works. It's secure. I've tested it. Now going back to our controller, this is basically going to render out a view. And let's have a look at our view again inside of the CMS. So as you can see here, I'm rendering out this list. Now, if you just ran the code that you saw, one thing which will be a bit odd is that this value here will not be rendered as you think it would be. What you'll see here is a little square bracket and you'll see the alias name rather than this friendly name. And this is because you need to add some sort of nice resource file to create this mapping. So what I've done in my app plugins, which is in my web folder, is you can see I've got this spell check tutorials folder. So what you need to do is basically create a folder in here. It needs to then have lang. And then in the lang, you need to create a resource file, which is an XML file. So in here, you need to put the culture code that marries up with your website. So by default, it's in dash us or English US. Now from here, you can start mapping in these key aliases. So as you can see here, we've got this dashboard tabs. In dashboard tabs, we can do <clears throat> unpublished tutorials. And then from here, you can see that I've actually got this nice pretty value. So it's this thing here, which is getting displayed here. We're using the alias here to do that mapping. So when you're creating these back office plugin folder, you can call this whatever you want. The important thing is, is that it's checked into source control and you follow this lang and then this resource name. So yeah, it took me a while to figure that one out. That can be a bit annoying. <laughs> so going back to our controller, we now know how to display that screen. We know how to display the resource value. Probably worthwhile quickly walking through how we're getting that data. So I've got this search service here, which is querying the internal Umbraco index. So going to the implementation, <coughs> what we can see is we're using the examine manager. We're querying the internal index. So this means that we're going to search for all pages in the CMS. So if you just wanted to pub, um, do a search and just render out all public pages, you'd use the external index. Whenever you're trying to create any back office extensions, 
and you need to render content which probably isn't published, you'll be using this internal index jobbing. <laughs> now building up a searcher, I've covered in a search video previously, you create the searcher and then you build up a query. So in my example, I'm limiting my query just to the blogs and then I'm creating and filtering my dates based on this date, uh, this post date. And basically this post date here is a custom property that gets added to through a notification. So as you can see, we're querying the internal index. We're getting all these values, which are by post date. Then as soon as we get all these values from here, we convert them to actual proper objects. So using the application service. So we've got this context service here. This is going to allow you to query the back end data rather than the front end cache. We're going to convert all of our items into the I content. So just by mapping our search results ID into our I content, we're now going to get this list. So it's basically this process here of querying that internal index, doing a query based on this post date. This is going to allow us to create that list that we just saw. So where are we? This list here. So yeah, hopefully that all makes sense. Now going back to our controller, what we will find is that we're getting that data. I'm now filtering the data by saying it's not published. So this is going to get us everything which isn't published, which is exactly what we want. And then we pass that down into a view and then we just convert, create a very simple view model for it, which then has the data. So hopefully all of this should make it very easy for you to understand. One thing which is also useful is if you're trying to link to other internal Umbraco pages, you can just use this format, which is Umbraco hash content content slash edit and then the ID at the end. So if you copied all the code that we've covered so far and put it all within your application and tried to view the back office extension, you're still going to encounter a 404. And the reason for this is down to routing. Now, if you see my ultimate controller guide, you will know that when you're say, doing the route hijacking in normal page requests in the back end, you're going to get some auto magic routing done for you. So all you need to do is create the controller type and things will work. However, whenever you're creating a back office view, you're going to have to create manual redirect rules yourself. Otherwise, you're just going to get a 404 error. Now, I've covered this before, but it's worth going over again in the same video. In order to create custom routing rules within the Umbraco CMS, you do it within the classic new startup file. So within your configure section, what you want to do is, for good practice, probably create an extension. You can define the rule in here if you want to. So what we're going to do is look at this extension rule that I've created. So yeah, to do this, static partial class and Braco application build extensions, implement this use custom routing rule using the this and Braco endpoint builder context. And basically in here, what you'll see is that we've got this secure our route. And I've also got this admin route and they're pretty much the same thing. But the first thing to know is you just give it any sort of name. This can be whatever you want to call it. The second bit is quite important. It's the route that's going to trigger the application. So as you can see, as I mentioned, we need Umbraco back office plugins. So you need to do this no matter what you want. And then from in here, you type in the route that you want to match on. So in here, you can see that we've got admin and unpublished tutorials. And this is going to map to admin and index. So for the eagle eyed out there, if you thought I'd made a mistake or there was a bit of magic, as you can see in our backend extension, I've got this admin controller and it's called index. And in my startup redirect, what we've got is admin unpublished tutorials and it's mapping to admin index. And this is why when we looked in our dashboard, we've also got admin unpublished tu tutorials. So this is how the index is being mapped. And that's the reason why there's a different value because we're doing it all in the routing rule. So the routing rule, I can't stress enough, is the really important thing to make all of this work. So don't forget to add it or you're going to be very frustrated. My friends, 
I think we can now agree that you are a master in the back end. I would probably go so far to say that after this video that you probably really love the back end. He. <laughs> Being serious though, hope you can see that creating dashboards in Embraco is super simple. We create that class, implement from iDashboard. Then we just need to implement those four properties. We basically need to say where in Embraco the dashboard should be rendered, who can access it, a name, and a route that gets triggered whenever anyone tries to view the dashboard. So when it comes to that route, you'll need to put a custom routing rule in the routing table. And then you basically just need to create a controller and a view. Ideally, you'll use the authorized Embraco controller. However, if like me, you can get it working, use a normal controller and use those attributes. And then do not forget to add in that resource file. Otherwise, your dashboard and the label on it is going to look very funky. So if you've enjoyed this video, please do me a massive favor and like it. Liking it basically just tells me you want to see more on Braco content, so I'll carry on doing it. Also, it, it kind of tricks the YouTube algorithm into sharing my video to more people. So I would appreciate a like. Again, if you want to learn more about Braco, you get it by now. It's YouTube. Hit subscribe before you lose this video. Otherwise, you know, there's a weekly newsletter that I send. If you want to learn more about, you know, development, industry news, become a better developer, subscribe to that newsletter because it's super awesome. Otherwise, I hope you've got some value from this video. Um, any feedback, let me know in the comments below. Hope you have an amazing day. Happy coding.